Okay, this is the new CR10S5. That's the 500 millimeter square printer. And it's supposed to have a uh, power loss resume feature. This would be the fifth time I've tested it. So far, two of those times it did not uh, did not remember what, what was going on. In other words, when it powered back up, it was just the normal Creality screen. There was no way to resume the print. <clears throat> and those two times that it failed, it was... It's printing a part that was on the SD card that came with the unit. I don't really know what it is. That kind of looks like some knurled mobs or something. And it was still doing... Uh, looks like it has a raft on the part so it was still doing the raft on those two on the the other two times that it has worked and this time I'm gonna try it not right now we'll see it's actually printing the part so let's see if that has anything to do with it what we'll do now is uh, you can see where we're at here if you want to see the screen we're gonna pull the power and here's the screen and there's the power going now if everything works right, I'm going to plug the power back in. <clears throat> the screen should say the name of the project, and this time it is. So at this point you push the control knob and you go to resume print. Now I'm going to go back to the info screen. And the first thing it has to do is to make is to heat the bed back up to uh, 50. And then you got to heat the nozzle back up to 205. We'll see what happens. While it's doing all that, we'll talk. So I found this unit on a uh, site called 3dprintersbay.com and right now they're about $925. But the reason I bought from them rather than the other people was because it claimed it had auto resume print off. And of course all the new CR10S's have the filament sensor. If you scroll down their web page at the very bottom it says auto resume print after power interruption outage. So that's why I took the chance on this one versus uh, other companies. The, uh, the bed is supported by two rails and each rail has six wheels so there's 12 uh, bearing wheels that support the bed. It moves really smooth, no slop at all. You have your dual uh, Z motors, of course one on each side. Just make sure that that's set up level when you start and you'll be good to go. <clears throat> it has the filament runout sensor, which will pause the print, and then you do basically the same thing I did here. Once you put the new filament in, you can hit resume print, and it goes. And I've tested that twice, and it, and it has worked. And if everything goes good here, we'll test it again. Uh, where are we at? Okay, it's heating the... Uh, the nozzle up, 199, it's got to get to 205, so it's almost there. It should, it should show some signs, and let's see where we're at. So, well, so it stopped on the circle on the right in the far top right corner. We'll see where it resumes at. Here we go, it's showing some signs of life. <clears throat> Homing. And now it's heading back over to the print. Looks like it's resumed. It doesn't look like it started exactly at the same place that it had stopped. But then again, I don't know if I'm really too concerned about that. I got this large scale printer so I could do large parts. So if I'm four or five days into a print and there's a power outage. I don't think I'll really care if there's one little bugaboo in the print because you can always fill and touch that up. That's a lot better than losing the print after all that time. So it has resumed. It is printing. Let's see. What else did we want to talk about? Well, as far as testing a filament runout, <clears throat> I'm just gonna cut the gonna cut the filament back here, and rather than waiting for all of that filament to run through, I'm just gonna go ahead and move the sensor. It just slides on, and there. 
took the sensor. Okay, and apparently it's figured out that it ran out of filament. And let me set this camera down for a second here. What I'm trying to do is feed this uh, end of the filament back through the sensor. I'm trying to cheat my way through this. I've never tried doing that before. I guess you can't. <clears throat> there we go. Let's cheat our way through it like that. <clears throat> and the screen says error, change filament. Okay, down here it says resume. So I hit resume. I'm going to go back up to the info screen. And so once again, the tip is cooling down and it's going to have to uh, heat the bed back up. And it says heating. So let's see what it does once the, the bed heats back up again. The filament sensor seems to be opto. Seems to be a little LED inside there glowing. I haven't actually taken it apart. I suppose that could just be uh, an LED and, and not actually part of the sensor. Maybe it is mechanical. I'll have to take one apart and find out. Um, an easy way that I have found to keep the registration between the two Z rails I learned on this my old CR10 here. Basically, <clears throat> when you uh, go through and do a home, let's just power this puppy up. There, auto home. So when it comes down and, and hits that little micro switch and homes in, as it's getting there, I guess this will show up. Basically, the, the bo this bottom part of this carriage right here is going to tap into that micro switch. And we've got some action over here. So the bed must have heated and, and it has resumed. Very good. Anyway, uh, this height that you have here, let's go to uh, disable steppers. Disable steppers. If, if you measure that height between the bottom and that exactly, I made a piece of metal that was exactly the same. In other words, if I moved this L-shaped piece of metal that I have clipped on here over here, it would just fit. So I put that same piece of metal on this side, and what it allows is any droop or any change between the two, anytime I start a print, the machine will automatically make sure that both Z motors are in proper alignment. Okay, well, looks like the uh, power loss resume and the filament resume both worked. One uh, weird thing that the, the printer does, unfortunately, is it has a, an, what they call auto bed level. And of course, you still manually level the bed. But what it would automatically do is allow you to step through going to the four corners of the bed so you don't have to disable the steppers and goof things up and do it that way. Unfortunately, the firmware that's in here is based on the regular CR10 300 millimeter machine. That's why this piece of tape is over in this corner instead of the center of the bed. The file that they have on there was, was sliced with the 300 millimeter machine in mind. The auto bed leveling is based on it, so when you, when you run through all the steps, you know, you go there and the first step is here, then you hit the next one, and the next step is here, and you hit the next one, then it's here, and it's here. So it wouldn't do you any good if it came to trying to level the entire bed, and that's unfortunate because that is a whole lot quicker than having to manually move everything around. So. Uh, make what you will of that. Out of the five attempts now with the power loss, three of them have worked. The two that didn't work, the only thing they have in common was that they were the printer was still just in the very basic parts. Let's see if we have anything in the garbage here. Here we are. They were still just doing the raft. So I don't know if the machine is smart enough to know that the raft, if you're that early in the print, don't worry about it, just start over. 
or if the machine just doesn't work every time. But the uh, other, the other three times, uh, well, two times because the third worked. I was about this far along into the print when I pulled the power, and it would, and it would pick up and resume and keep going. So I don't know. It might be worth it. If I guess if it even saves just one of my long-term prints, it was worth it. So there you go.